In producing videos of historical figures and movie stars, it's not my intention to place these people on a pedestal or to make heroes out of politicians and actors. My goal is to show them as they are, simple human beings, fighting the same battles we all do. On January the 27th, 2019, we traveled to Okmulgee, Oklahoma, to locate the grave and home of William Will Sampson. Sampson played Chief Bromden in the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Will Sampson was a full-blooded Cherokee and born on the Creek Nation. Sampson played Ten Bears in the Clint Eastwood movie Josie Wells. Will's family members was very helpful with information. Thank you, Melanie and Rusty. On December the 28th, 2021, we went back to Oklahoma and did Wes Studi, Native American actor. Wes Studi is a full-blooded Cherokee and was born only 50 miles from where Will Sampson was born. Wes was in Dances with Wolves and the last of the Mohicans. He'll be Geronimo in the movie Geronimo, an American Legend. Wes is still acting and working to further his Native American causes. On February the 3rd, 2016, we did James Garner, his extraordinary life. James Garner became a favorite actor while watching him as Maverick on TV and later on The Rockford Files. He was born James Scott Bumgarner outside of Norman, Oklahoma. I went to his mother's grave in Shawnee and told James's daughter Gigi that I'd found her grandmother's grave. She asked if I'd seen a Dr. Scott's grave nearby. I said no because I didn't know to look for it. She said that all her folks were all delivered by Dr. Scott and that they all had the Scott name, thus James Scott Garner. On July the 4th, 2019, we traveled to Haleville, Alabama, looking for the graveside and home of actor Pat Buttram to do the video entitled Pat Buttram Beyond Green Acres. I'm sure you remember Pat as Mr. Haney on the TV show Green Acres, but I remember him as the sidekick of cowboy star Gene Autry. On the 2nd of December, 2019, we traveled to Shelbyville, Tennessee, in order to do a video on Beautiful Jim Key, the world's smartest horse. Now, this is a very remarkable story about a horse raised by his owner, Dr. William Key. Scientists and educators tried to find the trickery behind the smart feats of Jim Key but could not and finally said that this horse has the equivalent of a sixth grade education. On April 29, 2019, I traveled to Langtree, Texas to do Judge Roy Bean, The True Story. It is one video I enjoyed doing, but for the life of me, I couldn't decide if Judge Bean was a nice guy or a scoundrel. I finally decided that he was a scoundrel with a sense of humor. He would stop court to let the defendant buy drinks for everyone. Watch the video and see what you think. On September the 7th, 2015, I went to Louisiana, home of the governor and senator and sometimes dictator, Huey P. Long. I first went to Winfield, where Long was born and raised. President Roosevelt said that Huey P. Long was the most dangerous person in America. However, that was when Roosevelt thought Long was planning on running against him for president. In Baton Rouge, I filmed inside the Capitol, where Huey Long was assassinated. In September 2021, I drove to Fort Smith, Arkansas, to do a video on Bass Rees, the first Long Ranger. Bass Reeves was the most honorable Deputy U.S. Marshal 
working for Judge Parker's court. He delivered more prisoners from Indian Territory to the federal court in Fort Smith than any other marshal. He even tracked down his own son that was wanted for murder. In February 2021, we did a video on the cast of Lonesome Dove. Captain Woodrow Call was played by actor Tommy Lee Jones. It was Jones's first Western. He performed his own stunts because he was raised up riding horses. Robert Duvall played the fun-loving Augustus McRae. Robert said that his portrayal of Augustus McRae might be the best part that he's ever played. Joshua Dietz's character was taken from the real-life cowboy of Bose Acker. Danny Glover portrayed Joshua Dietz. Laura Wood, the prostitute that was raped and tortured by the outlaw Blue Duck, and Augustus McRae comes to aid. He calls her Lori Darling, played by actress Diane Lane. In April of 2021, we did four more actors of the cast of Lonesome Dove. In What Happened to the Cast of Lonesome Dove, Part 2. Ex-Texas Ranger Jake Spoons shows up in Lonesome Dove after a 10-year absence. Jake is played by the actor Robert Urich. At the end of Urich's life, he had to battle cancer. He at one point lost his hair and said that he cried every day. Newt Dobbs was a 17-year-old orphan raised by Captains Call and McRae. Newt was played by Ricky Schroeder. Ricky was 18 years old at the time and said that years later, he went back to the Moody Ranch in South Texas where Lonesome Dove was filmed on the banks of the Rio Grande River and that everything had fallen down and decayed. Clara Allen was played by Angela Houston. Proves you don't have to be a prostitute to have a good heart. Angela Houston is the daughter of the famous director, John Houston. For years, she was girlfriend of Jack Nicholson. Next was Sheriff July Johnson. He was just plain pathetic and a little bit simple-minded. July was played by Chris Cooper, who did a marvelous job Play in July. On January the 22nd, 2021, we did Strange Tales of the Natchez Trace. We drove the entire trace, discovering the history from Nashville to Natchez. The Natchez Trace is a reflection of our national hero. After watching Natchez Trace, to get the entire story of the mystery of Meriwether Lewis, watch our video entitled what happened to Meriwether Lewis? On August the 20th, 2019, someone sent a message to me about a Kiowa warrior, Sergeant Pascal C. Pulaw. The person said that Pulaw should have the Medal of Honor. After investigating the military records of Lieutenant Pulaw, who received a battlefield commission, I fully agree. Pulaw should be right there with York and Murphy. See what you think. In 2018, we went to Bethune, Colorado, where actor Denver Dale Powell was born. His parents came from Kansas, where his dad had heard that there were homestead land to be had in Colorado. Denver was named after the state capital, and during World War II, he was wounded at the Battle of Guadalcanal. On the 7th of March, 2015, I went to Texas and New Mexico to do the true story of the movie of Lonesome Dove. I discovered that Oliver Loving and Charles Goodnight was the real Gus McRae and Captain Woodrow McCall. A couple of differences was, instead of Gus McRae's leg having gangrene, it was Oliver Loving's arm. Instead of Woodrow taking Gus's body 600 miles Back to the little grove of trees on the Rio Grande, it was Charles Goodnight taking Loving's body 600 miles back to his home in Weatherford, Texas. In December 2014, I went back to Fort Sumner, New Mexico. 
Fort Sumner is one of the most historical towns in the West. Not only did Kit Carson bring the Navajos here and form a military post, now this is the reason that Oliver Lovin and Charles Goodnight drove their cattle here to sail to the army to feed the Navajo. The story of Lonesome Dove. Now a few years later, Billy the Kid was killed and buried here. In September 2018, I went to Wilcox, Arizona to do a video on cowboy star Rex Allen's unimaginable ending. Not only was Rex a cowboy star, but for years he was the voice of numerous Disney movies. He died in an unbelievable way. His horse Coco is buried across from his museum in Wilcox, and Rex requested his ashes be scattered there. I received a nice message from Rex's first grandson. In October 2020, we did Maureen O'Hara, the greatest guy that John Wayne ever knew. Maureen was part of John Ford's company of actors. She was one of the boys, according to John Wayne. She didn't flinch when someone said a cuss word or told a dirty joke. At the same time, being all woman and a lady. A while back, I received a message from Maureen's grandson telling me that he had heard stories from his grandmother all his life about some of the antics John Wayne pulled. On December the 16th, 2015, I went to the retirement home of Jefferson Davis in Biloxi, Mississippi to do the video, Who Was Jefferson Davis Really? For years after the war, Jefferson Davis was accused of being a traitor. To judge him by today's standards might not be fair. When the United States was formed in 1776, people in each colony or state was loyal to their own state and not so much to the newly formed federal government that was formed mostly to help band together during war. Loyalty to each state continued until the Civil War, in the North as well as the South. To Jefferson Davis, if he had stayed with the Union, in his eyes, he would have been a traitor to his home. Same with Robert E. Lee in Virginia. That's why leaders in the North seem to have more understanding of their decision than we do today. To get the full story of Jefferson Davis, go also to our video on Mound Bayou. On November 13, 2019, we did Frank Sinatra, A Complete Life. I was surprised to find out how much the older stars were actually connected to the mob. It makes sense when you realize the mob's control over nightclubs and gambling casinos. On 8 November 2019, we went to Memphis. Living in Memphis for years, I never knew who Tom Lee was, although I always heard of Tom Lee Park. So I decided to try and tell the story of Tom Lee, Memphis hero. In August 2019, we went to Middle Texas to the small town of Gene Autry to do the video, Gene Autry from Poverty to Wealth. Gene was born in Texas, but raised in Oklahoma. Born into poverty, but made millions learning to play the guitar while a youngster working for his dad's ranch. On October 25th, 2018, I did Robert Blake. Blake started acting very young, Little Rascals, Little Beaver, and unlike other child actors, he advanced to TV and movies. To my surprise, I received a call from his assistant saying that Robert had seen the video and wanted to speak with me. He said I would treated him fair in the documentary, which I was pleased to hear. He's now doing videos on his own called Robert Blake, I Ain't Dead Yet, So Stay Tuned. He describes what it was like growing up in old Hollywood. It's very interesting. On August 10, 2021, we did Lizzie Borden. Although Lizzie was found not guilty, there are lots of circumstantial evidence that indicates otherwise. See what you think. In July 2020, we did The Life of Geronimo. 
I think that we was able to give a glimpse into the life of this Apache warrior and how he considered his family and desire to be with them. On August 8, 2020, we did Clint Walker, a good guy. I watched Cheyenne on TV while growing up, like most other kids. His story about falling on a ski pole and sticking him through the heart and then living after doctors thought he was dead was almost unbelievable, but it was true. On July 4, 2016, I drove to Mound Bayou, Mississippi, one of the only all-black towns in the country. The story of Mound Bayou is also the story of Joseph Davis, brother of Jefferson Davis. Both Davis brothers were very liberal towards their servants, never calling them slaves but servants. They allowed their slaves to form their own government and discipline their own. Their ancestors created Mound Bayou from what they learned from the Davises. Watch this video and learn about these remarkable people that created Mound Bayou. On October 20, 2021, I went back to Fort Smith, Arkansas to Miss Laurels. It's now the Fort Smith Welcome Center. In its day, it was Fort Smith's most classy upscale whorehouse. It was one of seven on the same street. One belonged to Belle Starr's daughter, Pearl. All but Miss Laurels burned to the ground in a suspicious fire. On May 18, 2016, we went to the grave and location on the Natchez Trace where explorer Meriwether Lewis of the Lewis and Clark expedition was either executed or committed suicide. We give the story and you decide. On May 30th, 2015, I went back to DeKalb, Texas, where I had done Dan Blocker. But this time I was to do the plane crash of rock and roll star Ricky Nelson, which was in a pasture within a mile of the home and grave of Dan Blocker. Ricky's daughter Tracy was gracious enough to give us the truth about the cause of the crash. No drugs were involved. It all came from a malfunctioning heater. The government investigators proved that Tracy was right. In May of 2017, we went to Piggott, Arkansas, in order to do the actress Lee Remick, her life story. Lee was in Piggott to do the movie A Face in the Crowd. She was staying in the home of Amanda Robinson, a 15-year-old high school majorette, who taught Lee how to twirl a baton and speak like a Southern girl. Thank you, Amanda, for helping us to understand Lee better from someone who had lived with her for a while. On December 21st, 2014, I went to Memphis, Tennessee and Hernando, Mississippi to do what happened to James Meredith. James Meredith, in my opinion, did more for the civil rights movement than most others without getting credit for it, because he disagreed with the movement and how it was run. Watch and see what you think. On July the 13th, 2019, I went to South Mississippi to do the true story of Prospect Hill, Mississippi and Africa. Plantation owner Captain Isaac C. Ross left in his will that his slaves will be set free at his daughter's death. This initiated a chain of events that led to murder and the creation of a country, Liberia, in West Africa. This story is almost unbelievable, but it proves how much truly alike we all are. On July the 16th, 2017, we went to Kingman, Arizona to do a historical documentary on the United States Presidents and First Ladies, Part 1 and 2. During the process, I learned many unusual things about our history. I think you might find it interesting. 